A Design Today veteran is back on the show. Dano stopped by to talk collaboration with me. Many designers struggle with team collaboration for one reason or another. Maybe it's greater autonomy they're seeking, better brainstorming, more psychological safety, or less opinion injected into the process. All this and more is tackled on this episode of Design Today with Dan Oard. Oh, are these new? Welcome to the new mics. <gasps> Bro, they're they're the same. Nice. No. They are, aren't they? They are not the same. They look like Oh, them. these are the same. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no, not from before. Not no. the same as before. No, not definitely not the same. These, these are, like are six times the more exact expensive. Exact same microphones. <laughs> yeah. What are these? These are uh Rode Procasters. Oh, okay. And uh I had and two. And you many... got no, those are the same. Oh, okay. I like it. It's a good setup. It's a good setup. <laughs> uh, but these mics are a little bit different because uh, the old ones were dynamic. No, they were condenser mics. Mm. So they could pick up a lot more sound. Yeah, these, are these are dynamic mics. Yeah. So you really got to make sure it's like right in your mouth when you're yeah. talking. So if you decide to lean back, just take that mic with you. The same as vocal mics. Oh, is it? Yeah, mm-hmm. they're dynamic People mics. Sing, yeah. Yep. Right in front. Um, okay, I'm already recording us right now. Oh, is, and these are going? Yeah, they're and going. Just because we got to jump into this. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I want to jump into it. Uh, there's no warm up. We're just going right into this. Oh, we've had the warm ups. Go watch the first two videos. <laughs> we can do this. No, I'm, I'm definitely confident we can do this. In fact, I just had lunch with someone today. It was actually not, I didn't want to say this on air, but we're since we're recording, it's going on air. Um, the person I had lunch with today said, you know what my favorite episodes are? They're the ones with Dano. And it's like, <laughs> you guys just have, I mean, the friendship you guys have had, it just definitely shows through. I was like, yeah? <laughs> the first time I ever met him was that first episode. Yeah, that and was the first time we had met. He was like, no way. I was yeah. like, yes, sir. It was intriguing because that first time, speaking of what we're talking about today, collaborative design, yeah. is just the energy, the vibes that you get. And there are will be people that I feel like it's going to be more difficult sure. for you to collaborate with. Yeah. But there are certain people that you meet and you're just like, I get you, you get me. Like there's this connection that's already happening. Yep. I like it. Keep going. You know, oh, sorry. That was a pound for those who are just listening. Yeah. So I feel like, I feel like, well, getting into collaborative design, should we just jump into it? I guess. <laughs> 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 Well, it's it's something that I brought up today. So when I was at Willow Tree, sure. which I've talked about before, um, I was on a team specifically for a very popular beverage company, um, and we were working on an internal project for them. Now, the team was a PM, Don Mullen, yep. awesome PM. Okay. Love that man. He was a former software engineer, so it was cool to have him, his insight as a PM, yep. uh, a software test engineer who, uh, Joey... And then our iOS engineer, Chris, who he and I had a great vibe together while we were there. But that those four people, we had one of the most effective teams that I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, as you scale, it's like, what do you do? Right. But our ad hoc meetings that we had, and we were in a completely separate building from the rest of Willow Tree. We were in a WeWork building for a little while. And we flew out to New York and met with this company. And then we came back and we just had these ad hoc meetings, whiteboarding sessions. Chris and I, the iOS engineer, talked a lot, Mm -hmm. just words like, what could we do? What should we do? What shouldn't we do? What could we do more that they didn't ask for that would actually help them? Right. And after those discussions, it was whiteboarding. Okay, what components do we use? Uh, What's the best options for like the navigation, the hierarchy, all that? Any time in that group, I could have left that team and Chris would have known exactly what to do because we talked constantly with each other. Just in constant communication? Constant communication. He sat right next to me. But that collaboration between us, yeah, it wasn't so much the idea that I could leave and he'd know exactly what to do because of our conversations. It was him and me being on a good page and Don and Joey, where when we met, everybody felt comfortable offering insight Mm -hmm. from either Joey knowing the testing, like what could potentially come up as an issue 
or Chris suggesting a better component or Don, this old school engineer giving insight into like what Pepsi potentially might want more of. Sure. That group of four people, it felt it was the one time where I felt like I was facilitating that app the, yep. the uh, as what a sh- yep. designer should do. So I want to break that down then. Yeah. And just start trying to pull out different themes and that came out of it. You talked about communication. You mm-hmm. talked about being in sync, like the synergy. Um, you know, what, what allowed to that synergy? I mean, if we're breaking that down to themes or principles, what do you pull out of that? I think there's one element of boundaries, which is people need to get work done mm-hmm. outside of that time. So one of the principles there, the values was sustainable flow. Um, and so there needs to be time where you get in the flow and like, don't bother me. Like, I just need to get heads down on whatever we've talked about. How do you signal that? Need to implement it. So we at Willow Tree, when I was there and, and I've done this now, even in my own personal life is like, I block off. Typically people would block off one o'clock to about four o'clock as flow time. Sure. So most people, if you go to their calendar, flow time is from one to four. Yep. The morning times are, okay, what do I need to work on? during flow time. So you'd have like your normal standups, right? Which is great to let everybody know like, Hey, I I need your help on this or Hey, did you get that thing done yet? Right. Or here's what I'm working on today. But right after a meeting like that, it was actually in those meetings. It'd be like, Hey, Chris, can I borrow you for like half an hour so we can just whiteboard some stuff Yeah. so we can have a conversation about stuff. So all the morning time was focused on us being in sync, me having some insight from the four hours of flow from the day before that I brought into that stand-up the next morning. Mm-hmm. Here's where I got to yesterday. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Boom. Okay. He would give inside Joey. And it just, that bouncing around of just, hey, Don, I need to meet with you for like a few minutes right now. And just doing it. Like, you know, obviously he would be like, okay, like give me an hour. Yeah. Let's meet then. And when we met, most effective by far. Okay. But still, I, I want to get further into that because not, let's, let's do not it. everyone is going to be whether it's, uh, I don't know, fortunate enough to be in that situation where they just connect with people. Right. So, I mean, how do you build this repertoire? How do you set brown? I mean, you guys didn't just naturally have boundaries. You had to do something to get to the level you're at. I think that's the idea of communication and, and um, conveying expectations where I feel like a lot of people readily assume that people know what they want to right. a degree. Right. Because it's in your mind, but that's not in your mind. Or the other person's mind. Yep. And being able to, uh, w- what some teams do, norming meetings, right? Like, how are we going to work? When is our flow time going to be? When is the best time to, like, have these ad hoc meetings? And everybody just understands, like, these are the rules for this project. Mm-hmm. So, but that, for me, is this baseline, like, rule kind of organization and, and, and sorting. Then there's the other depth of it, which is, yeah, the synergy, the connection with those people. And so you can do these little group you know, you know, they go to lunch. But what I found most effective when I first went out there and my first day for the first few weeks, actually, almost every day, I took somebody else out to lunch. So like, you're building a reputation. Yeah. I was just like, hey, you're the, I don't know, senior software engineer. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Like, I want to get to know you a little bit, like a lot of personal stuff, right? Trying to find outside the connection of outside of work. Because when you're talking about work stuff, it can get overwhelming. But when you have that connection a lot, like right. you both like to fly fish, right? it does something. Right. I don't know if everybody out there like who's listening to this, you meet somebody and you start talking about video games or you talk about fishing or you talk about skateboarding or movies. Yep. And it breaks this barrier all of a sudden. Yep. And you're just like, huh. I like this person. You know, what's funny is I just, uh, this is a shout out to a buddy of mine, Sean Peterson. He's up at Entrada. Okay. Never knew this dude from the, I mean, never met him, never talked to him or anything like that. And uh, seen his name float around, but again, never had any sort of communication with him. I ended up running into him at a Taking Back Sunday concert. Hey. And we we made this connection of like, you design, yeah, yeah, okay, we're crossing paths, we're figuring it out. And like, I just feel like I've got an instant connection with him now. Right. He mm-hmm. hits me up the other day. I borrowed out a camera to him. And, you know, we just got this this synergy that was just built upon this yeah. three hour concert we were at together. It was just yeah. so funny how it happened. So and I, I think looking at this collaboration, we, we look at it from the form of professional collaboration mm-hmm. in a working environment. But this is foundational to human beings. Oh, yeah. So in a like personal relationship that you have with your mom or your dad. And so I'll bring up parents because. 
it's a common element. You know, we all go through. Everybody gets is born and gets raised by somebody in in some way, and um, there's this idea um, that I talked with my brother yesterday, which is called social cognitive theory. Yeah, which says that people's behavior is a lot of the times based in some somebody's somebody's modeled it for them. Yeah, whether directly or indirectly, whether I'm watching you or, or I see it as we're interacting or I see it on TV, and I start to behave according to some things that I see, in both positive and negative ways. So you look at a parent, and if they model something, which is, in this case, what I'm trying to bring up here, a son or daughter comes to you and tries to tell you something, whether that's, hey, dad, I don't like it when you do this, or it makes me not feel loved when you do that. If the dad reacts in a negative way, he's more than likely, more often than not, that son's not going to go back and tell you something in the future. Right, right. Because he thinks that you're going to get mad next time. Right. So he's going to withhold that window that he shattered, that scratch in the car, because he attributes, if I tell dad something like this, he's going to get mad. Right. So with people, when you're working in a professional setting, being able to break that barrier where you feel a connection with somebody to the point where you feel like... You don't even have to question because like, you don't know how they're going Mm -hmm. to react, Mm -hmm. but because you've broken some barrier, you can at least feel comfortable approaching them to have a discussion around something. Yeah. Whether that is how best should I give feedback? But in my discussion today with collaborative design, um, with Nick Bluth and, and Ryan and, and Charles, uh, when we were talking, it was like, okay, maybe the best things for people to do is to ask more questions that help that person to think about why they did something a certain way. We brought up, I think in the first episode, Sean Randall at BYU Idaho, (laughs) and he would ask questions. Why did you include that shape there? Why is it that color? Right. Not as a way of, he wouldn't say that's a dumb color to use. Well, he did sometimes. Sometimes he would. (laughs) If it was, there's moments where it's like, listen, that's that's not the right approach, you know. <laughs> right. The bluntness, but being able to, I think, in a collaborative environment, realize that you don't know where somebody's coming from, right? With what they designed, where their brain was at, so yeah. you need to discover. Oh, what were your thoughts about doing this or that? So, so you're coming just back to like this idea of just like communication, right? Yeah. And, and it's, it sounds cliche to say, but like communication is core to any sort of relationship, right? We, yeah. We've heard that over and over again. I just did an episode with my uh, chief of product at Domo the other day. Oh, sweet. And in that episode, I was talking about how, you know, some designers argue that they don't have the autonomy that they want. They don't have the trust. They don't have, uh, you know, they're not getting something from business. Uh, and she kind of flips a coin and goes, business isn't out to get anybody. Mm-hmm. They are trying their best to give autonomy and trust to you know whoever's on the front lines yeah but autonomy and trust looks different to everyone Mm -hmm. and she's just saying simply that you can't just go on assuming that business isn't doing this for me and therefore they don't like me therefore they don't value this therefore they don't you know want to improve it's as simple as just having the conversation Mm -hmm. this is what autonomy looks like this is what matters to me this is how i value uh being able to work yeah so that business can go like okay cool course correct We'll make the adjustments, and this is how Daniel likes yeah. to work. This is how Dylan, Dylan likes to work. Yes. And with that, they go, now we can get on, get on the same page and start to build that synergy. But yeah. to sit back and be like, man, I can't work with this team because they don't want to collaborate with me. Well, they, they are thinking they're collaborating with you. Yeah. But how do you want to collaborate? Maybe you need boundaries. Maybe you need communication, you know? This, this, you know, I, I post a little bit about this, but you'll hear people on LinkedIn talking about, Oh, remote workers are the, that's the way to go. Like all the companies who are digital need to convert, you know? And I say to that, maybe, Uh what if somebody likes to come into an office? Right. I'm one of those people. Like there will be people who, like me, I I personally wish that I could work from home Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, and Uh then work in the office Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. Because being able to be in person and whiteboard something is so much better than trying to figure out how you're going to use a tool to do that outside of it. I know. But being able to have the time to dedicate to so you're trying to basically take this cookie cutter and be like this is how we do things here. Like this yep. this and this. So for one, a manager being able to look and ask people like understand that they're different and 
like what what resources do you need? What help do you need to accomplish your job? Not monetarily, not equipment wise to a degree, like there might be some tools that they enjoy using, but, you know, trying to stay on the same page. But I'm talking about how their brain works, Mm -hmm. how best they communicate, whether that's in person, in Slack, like there will always be times where you have to compromise as an employee and as a manager, but being able to have the consideration that, and that's why these norming meetings like that we had in our project teams, it's like, how are we? Going to what all are we going to agree on is how we're going to communicate, when we're going to do things, how best to bring right. things up. And other variables, I think, will affect how people work. You know, what are their motivations? Yes. Right. Uh, there's another one that uh, Domo does that's uh, it's a, an assessment of some sort, uh, but it's also it looks at, you know, it's a it's another one of those color wheel assessments, but it's, oh, yeah. it looks at not just like your color, but in conflict. Uh, what are your motivations? Like what motivates you in conflict? And some people move more towards compassion. Some people move more towards, uh, you know, just bulldozing it through, just mm. trying to get through the, t- some people rely on the analytics, you know, yeah. some people analytical, <clears throat> not necessarily analytics, but you know, so what are your motivations? What are your motivations in conflict? Yeah. What do you value? What mean, you know, what, what do you stand for? Like those types of things are going to be different for everyone. And to assume that you just understand them off the, off the cuff, yeah, is a yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I think one of the, the, the key things that you're trying to have come to pass in your team is that people, we talk about autonomy. Autonomy doesn't mean you do work your way, right? Autonomy means that you have the ability to do what works for you within the group as long as that's communicated. So what you're trying to do is get 10, 20, however many people are in this team so that they're moving as one. Right. So that the designer, product designer or whatever, or even an engineer doesn't necessarily feel like they're going off for a day or two and doing something on their own and then coming back. You want it to feel like people are understanding what engineering might be thinking about what design's thinking about, and you're moving together as yeah. one. Yep. That's the that's the goal is to move together as one. Because if you're moving together as one, the communication, people are on the same page, they know what's happening. If they don't know what's happening, they feel comfortable because of that energy, that oneness, to say, hey, I don't know what's right. happening. Can I get some insight? Like, or we talked about something yesterday. I'm still not sure exactly what's going on. Because if you move too far ahead in this separation, People don't talk enough. You don't break down those walls to feel comfortable asking a question like that. I, I, <clears throat> I bring up the example with this kind of social cognitive theory of kids in school who don't feel comfortable raising their hand and asking a question. Mm-hmm. And I think I brought this up before because they're worried about how they look to the other kids. Right. So if your team never makes another team member feel that way, that team member is going to come to you and say, hey, I don't remember, I don't understand that acronym. I don't know what this means. And now you're able to give insight to them that's going to help them do their job more effectively. Where right. before, which will help you, which before, if they didn't feel comfortable coming to you, they would try to figure it out on their own. And two days later, they would go to the PM and say, hey, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like two days ago, I had this thing. And the PM's like, why didn't you come to me two days ago? Like we could have had a resolution to this already. Right. Now there's another a separate discussion of like, do we need to move a date back? Do we need to? So you you've hit on this topic not twice. You said it in the very beginning, and it it triggered something when we first started talking. Have you heard of uh, the Project Aristotle that Google did? Is that ring a bell? I will no no okay. Uh-uh. So, and I'm I'm vaguely remembering this. Um, Project Aristotle, if I remember correctly, they were looking at what built effective teams. This is a Google's product team, and they're trying to look at what is going to build the most effective teams. Okay. And they they narrowed it down to five pillars, uh, and the first two that I remember off the off the cuff were um, psychological safety, and the second was dependability. And I'll get to that one in a second. But I think what you're hitting at is oh, psychological, psychological safety. Mm, yeah. You know, the person who doesn't feel comfortable raising their hand and asking a question hasn't found in this group the psychological safety. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if I do mess up or if I do look dumb, are you going to hold it against me? And is that going to taint the way we work again in the future? Right. So is there a a safety net here? 
Is it a safe place yeah. where we can bounce ideas off each other? Wild ones, dumb ones, crazy ones, you know? Uh, can we ask questions that, you know, may take us a step back? And can we explore the dark corners without, you know, feeling like people are going to jump down my throat? Is, mm-hmm. you know, have we created this psychological safety uh, and among among our group that's going to lead to more effectiveness? Yeah. And I think that's something that you're, you're hitting on right now, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. If... And that's the same thing with the kid. That is core and foundational. safety. Is, yeah, like with a friend, with a parent, if you don't feel like you can approach somebody and have a conversation about it, you're not going to have a conversation about it. And this is where bringing up a phrase passive aggressive yep. is you become passive because you don't feel comfortable bringing it up, which then lets it fester because now it's going to keep happening. So you start to see repetition and it just every time it happens, it makes you more mad. Yep. To the point where then the aggressive side happens, you either lash out, you yell, um, you quit, whatever it might be. That's not a world that anyone should ever be in. Yep. People have certain forms of passive aggressive, but yeah, what we're, that psychological safety of feeling comfortable bringing something up now as opposed to a week from now. Yep. Because now what do we do a week from now? I can't step back in time. Now we got to adjust the schedule. We've got to have a conversation over here with the chief product officer and be like, we got to push this thing back, whatever it might be. And now you got to have an explanation of why that like working with clients, that was something that I actually had happened to me Yeah, where I didn't bring something up early on and it affect it impacted the client and the work and, and the team. And well, it was a team. <laughs> It was the client team. I was the only team on the oh, okay. tree that was, okay. yeah, that was an interesting project. Okay. But their client team, yeah, yeah. it impacted Affects them. Out. So it's like what decisions you make in a collaborative environment will f- impact the future. Yep. You not bringing something up and it's not your necessarily just your fault for not bringing it up. It's the people in the team to create that environment, environment where right. you feel people feel comfortable coming to you. And so when we do things like diversity trainings and that kind of stuff, we talk about creating in groups and out groups. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in groups can be created in a variety of different ways. And in that in that realm, if you're creating an in group, you're obviously creating an out group, right? Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that they talk about in breaking down barriers of in groups and out groups is and, and ways to make everyone feel included is what I think you hit on right when we got off. You talked about how you would go out to lunch with people. Yeah. You'd get to know somebody. You'd build a repertoire with them. Because then you build, you kind of, bi- you take down these walls. You build the psychological safety. Now I know that Dano's got my back. He's there for me. He understands me. We connect on some sort of level, whether that level yeah. is fly fishing or it's something else. We connect on a level that I know, yeah, he's not out to get me. We're cool. Yeah. And it doesn't, and like taking people out to lunch and like the personal side of things, like that is something that I did, but Nick Bluth was tell, telling me today about him, he, with the collaboration in, in, in Canopy, that there was one time where he went in and um, the software engineers basically had his back with something they were pitching because they had been working in right. such a good environment. Right. Where now, we're not just talking, like that, that oneness, it's not just this person over here trying to argue to the engineers in your team why you should do something. Right. They already know why we yeah. should do it. Yep. Now they're going to say, to somebody who's trying to push back, but here's why we're going to do that. So you have buy-in now from your entire team because everybody knows what's happening. They agree to it. Right. You've come to resolutions, solutions, because you're collaborating on that idea. Yep. Now there's buy-in from everybody. Now it's just trying to sell people outside of that group that look in is, and it's easy enough because now we've got all these people who can explain it. Imagine how difficult that's going to be if you don't have that team unity, right? If now you have to sell it to people outside of that team. Oh. And and if you're looking, if you're yeah. one of those outsiders who's, I guess, getting sold, quote unquote, sold yeah. this idea, and you can tell that, hmm, as I read the room, I can only, I can tell that only one person actually really believes in this because the four others are all rolling their eyes or they're all <laughs> real laid back or they're not contributing yeah. to this conversation. Oh, that's the worst. And it's awkward, right? Yeah. Because now you're in mode of, and 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 this happens uh-huh. when you don't have discussions, like I would say constantly. Yeah. When you wait too long to have a design review or whatnot, now you're going to go in that room and try to pitch something. You're going to get feedback and be like, man, if I just would have come with sketches two days ago, 
we wouldn't even be where I'm at right now. Yep. Which is the two days I spent working on this UI needs to be changed. So I want to jump Oof. to I want to jump to the other Oof. piece, the other pillar that I find dependability. Dependability. Mm. Because I think what we're talking about is if you can build psychological safety and in that psychological safety, I think closely tied to it is the dependability. Mm. When someone on your team says they're going to do something, do they follow through? Are they dependable? Yeah. And if you want to talk about ways to break that trust or break that psychological safety is uh we decide on this direction, we're going to go back, divide and conquer, and then someone doesn't follow through. Now you come back to the team and realize, hey, man, yeah. you left us hanging. What happened? Yeah. And now that psychological safety is starting to get into jeopardy because somebody didn't follow through on what they, mm. they thought. So you talked about, um, you know, if, if uh, you were to walk away, somebody knew exactly what to do when they, to pick up where you left off. Mm. And that all is, is dependability. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that I still actually struggle with this dependability element. And it's not from the standpoint of, am I, so again, with this theory, self-efficacy was like whether I'm capable of doing the thing. Sure. Most of us feel capable or have the ability of like, yeah, I can do that. Like whether it's with after effect, whatever it might be, yeah. right? You have that self-efficacy that I can do this thing. The challenge now isn't whether I can do it. It's doing it by what point. Yeah. So there's two things that every team member needs to know. What am I doing next? And when do I need to do, do it by? Do I need to do it by? Yep. Which is tough because now if, and this is why that psychological, so breaking down the, the fear of the, you know, the fixed mindset versus the growth that right when I realize from what we decided, here's what I'm doing when it's due by, the next day I see a challenge that's going to be a little bit more problematic. Mm -hmm. I should immediately go to my PM or whoever it might be that I need to talk to and say, Hey, I think we might run into a problem here. Here's the problem. It might, we might need to talk about extending this deadline of when I've agreed to do something. Yeah. Because now again, right. The communication between us, I'm bringing something up to you to help me or I, I can come to you with some like ideas of when to do it by and like what the potential solutions are, but I'm trying to involve you and collaborate so that we agree to, again, a new date or a new expectation of what I'm going to be doing and by when. The moment that I feel like something might be off or I don't understand something enough, because here's what happened to me. Working on a project for a client, pitch, didn't communicate effectively what we were doing date came to present just a, a brief preview to the client before we actually did our pitch to see if we were in a good direction. And there were supposed to be, um, one of my team members thought that I was going to have 12 screens to show yeah. and I only had four. Yep. We'd never agreed that we were going to show 12 that day. We just knew that we needed to have 12 by the end, by the final pitch. Sure. So we never talked good. Like we didn't really communicate with each other that his expectation was 12 screens so that we could just preview it to them. Yeah. So I thought, hey, we're going to just show whatever we have as the preview and see if we're in a good direction, right? So now what happens? Now this trust over here of, does Dano really fall through what I say? Even if my model... You thought you were. I, I was. Yeah. So now there's this disconnect. But if we have that communication and the understanding, I think what the expectation that we have, like always communicating your expectations. Yep. Because if you don't, what happens? Assuming, obviously. And that goes both ways. That's on yeah. the manager. That's on the product manager. That's on you know whoever. That, that goes both ways. And to own, if you don't, be like, you know what? I did not communicate that effectively. That's my fault. Yep. Sorry. It's you. But being able to have that connection to where I can come to you and bring that up immediately. Or just if I don't feel like I fully understand what you're expecting being able to sit down with you again and be like, you know, we talked yesterday. I'm still conf a little bit confused though. Yeah. Like let's redefine and like write down exactly. We plan to have this X thing done by this date. Yep. And now we both see that it's not in our brains. It's on paper. Or it's out in the open. And now we both see this is what we're shooting for. So once we hit that date, we're going back to this. Do yep. we have this done? But in the process of getting this done, if you notice, immediately, like again, right when you notice, ooh, that screen's a little bit tougher for me to do, 
I, I might need help on it. Yeah. And this is where I fell short again, right? Which is, hey, PM, or if you don't have a PM, like talking to just whoever you're working with in the team right. and saying, I feel like I'm going to struggle with this. I'm going to see if I can f- get another designer to come help me do this screen or to help me do these ones over here so we can get done in time. Yep. And then the conversation can happen like, oh, do we need to push it back a little bit? So could, then we're looking at this paper saying, you know, whatever, these expectations and saying, okay, we're reevaluating this immediately. Do we need to shift something? Yep. Should we do 10 instead of 12? Should the date shift a little bit? And those conversations can happen. But if you waited and been like, no, I can do it. I can get it done by that date. And then you can't. Yep. Trust. All sorts of things start breaking down. Feeling the ability to communicate early and often gets you on the same page and it makes you more comfortable in the future, right? If you go to your dad 10 times and you he's reacted the same way in a short period of time, it's so easy for you next it's time ingrained. it comes into your head, I'm just going to go talk to him. Right now, I'm just going to go talk to him when it's in my head because yep. I know he's going to respond. Yep. Boom. You know, it's one of these things that uh, I, I think I want to give another... I guess piece of advice or or something that I've learned over the little past here is um, when it's not going well and when there is the miscommunications or the missteps or something yeah. like that, uh, we hold what we call like retrospectives. Yeah, I, I don't know what everyone else calls them, but in fact, I'm doing one tomorrow morning with a designer on my team who just conducted a, a little dev review today and probably didn't go exactly how she wanted it to go. And we're just going to do a, ret- a retrospective, and I, I want to make it abundantly clear in that conversation that I'm not upset. Like there, by no means it, do I think that this was a bad meeting. I think this was a great opportunity to, you know, they say cut your teeth, right? I think it's yeah. a great opportunity to, to sharpen your skills, cut your teeth and figure out how to improve it for the next time around. So I love having those experiences, uh, even the, the tough ones. Yeah. I say what's important is that you learn from them. Yeah. And so we hold these retrospectives so that we can evaluate how things were going. And, you know, if somebody says like, uh, you know, I didn't communicate that. That's something you brought up a second ago. You know, I didn't communicate that. That's on me. On the same token, it may be like, I thought I did communicate that. Mm-hmm. So where was the disconnect? Yes. Oh, you needed this in order to feel like that was communicated. Yes. Where I thought that was just in crank because, you know, it was written in the ticket or it was, you know, it was this and this, right? And so having the retrospectives to e- evaluate where we got off track mm-hmm. so that we can course correct. Yeah, yeah. I found myself with my small team, there's just two other designers on our mobile team right now. And I found myself with these two designers who they love to collaborate. They love the collaboration aspect of UX design. Mm -hmm. But I was six hours a day in meetings. Yeah. So how do you collaborate with Dylan when he's not even at his desk anymore? And so I had to figure out, okay, I need to fix my schedule because this is something that they value highly. Yeah. How can I make sure that they've got time to collaborate with me? And so I started blocking out hours. Every day on the calendar, we've got, it's a stupid name, Collaboration Corner. Yeah. And every day, we got these this hour blocked out here, blocked out there. And we know that if you've got something, let's set. I got the time for it. If not, we can keep on grinding. But more often than not, now we've got the opportunity to sit yeah. down. And that's what they value. And I'd yeah. love to get involved in it. And I think that that, like, don't, like, people hear me and they're like, oh, I got to get stuff done. I got to focus. You know, I don't want people to bug me at my desk. Then, like... Talk to him and say, hey, I need to meet with you regularly. Right. What days, what times work best for you? 15 minutes to just go over how things are going. Um, and not everybody needs that. Like maybe people communicate pretty effectively through Slack or something like that. It, I would say admittedly, I think it took me a long time to realize that we needed to set aside time because it wasn't communicated to me that, hey, I just need your time every, once a day. Yeah. And so it took probably longer than it needed before we got to this point of, okay, well, let's set yeah. time aside. I think that an important part of all of this for people, and I guess recommending a book, of it's called Mindset. Uh, I think it's Carol Zwick. Carol. Something like that. Dweck. Dweck. Yep. And the growth versus fix, which we have talked about before, yep. is the growth mindset of like, why not go and ask Dylan for time, because the worst that he'll say is I'm too busy to give it to you. But do you really think that he's going to say, sorry, I'm too busy for you? Because if you are in a company, I will just say, if you're in a company that that happens, why are you working there? Sure, exactly. You you wouldn't have been happy anyway. That's not collaboration. Can I tell you why they won't come to me and say it? Because this is my face when I'm not thinking anything. Ah. Sorry, and I'm already smiling. 
But Dylan's got a little bit of that RBF. Yeah. And I don't want to bug him. Yeah. Because he's going to get pissed because look at that face. He's already pissed. Yeah. That's why they don't interrupt. And I think this is something that I talked to my uncle about. Um, he he worked at Mountain America for a long time. And he had the same challenge with people who look upward in the leadership ladder is what I call the follower delusion, which is, oh, I need to do what they're saying mm -hmm. when they say it mm -hmm. because they're the expert because look at where they're at. That's not always the case. Right. Um, the most important thing I think for a leader to do, having been in that position is within creating that environment, that collaboration is being able to reach out to individuals yourself and say, Hey, is there anything that I can help? Like, is there any questions you have, or is there anything that I could give you yep. to help you do your job more effectively? Yep. Time, like, let me know, like. Slack it to me, whatever. I have a little bit of RBF, so when you approach me, like, yep. you're prob I'm probably gonna look pissed, but I'm not. I swear, I'm, I'm not. so open to yep. talking to you about it, and defining again the expectation, like, okay, I can approach Dylan about anything. Now it's Dylan's responsibility, or whoever you know does that, to follow through when they do approach you. Yep. That you accept, you invite, you listen, you help figure out what to do. Yep. You know, and I'll just I'll just say this, and maybe this is only for the benefit of the two designers I'm working with, but I, I think more often than not, now that I've recognized some of these things that I could do to better help people, now I need to consciously be mindful of some of my shortcomings in order to improve the situation. You know, yeah. there, there'll be times when we're collaborating and I just, I want to start asking some follow-up questions. I want to dig deeper. But again, with that RBF going on, they're going like, man, he doesn't like this idea, yeah. you know? And like, it just, it's going like, Holy smokes, he's pressuring me on this thing. And it's just like, no, I, I want to collaborate. I'll, and I'll fake a smile. Yeah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going. Just because I I need to, I need to, that one's on me, mm -hmm. right? And so I need to fix that. But I don't want that to impede our ability to collaborate. And again, it comes back to when it's this one-on-one -on -one collaboration, it goes back to these little moments that you have that slowly build up to where that person understands who you are. So like the first time that somebody meets with you, there's a certain perspective, but they're right. like, huh, they didn't react the way that I thought they would. They had, it was pleasant, you know? Right. The next time it's like, okay, I'm going to try it again. Maybe it's different now. Pleasant again. Pleasant, pleasant, pleasant. Even in difficult times coming out of trying to figure out a way to come out so it feels pleasant to them, talking about UX design and like we're talking about UX design in relationships. Right. And how to make that a better experience. Right. And like those experiences, those little moments that happen with one-on-ones or with the team. And that's why I liked collaboration in a team environment, like where you're working with another designer or whatnot. Because then the design isn't mine, it's ours. Yep. The project is our project. These aren't my UI wireframes. These are our, from our discussion, this is what we talked about. Yep. So now you're not coming at me anymore. You're coming at us. You're coming at the project. And yep. that's the space of being in like, okay, we're all, we all talked about this. What's different now? Now it's not you attacking me. It's we're having a, to redefine or rediscuss something that needs to be changed uh -huh. as a whole. Yep. That's, oh, those are great moments. I agree, man. Well, we are at time. Yes. And uh, before I before we wrap, I do want to plug, uh, we've done a couple episodes together. Yeah. Uh, some pretty good episodes, actually. Yeah. And uh, I want to, you know, because I've gotten feedback from a few that Dano is a local fan favorite here on the podcast, mm. uh, I want to go back and plug, we've done interviews on resumes. Yeah. Uh, we've done interviews on interviewing. Yeah. And uh, and now this. So there's some other good episodes and good stuff that, that Dano shared on the yeah. Design Today podcast. And if you want to go back and listen to it. And I will say, like, if there's anything that we didn't obviously answer here, like, you can obviously leave comments, but you can feel free to reach out to me on Twitter and whatnot. And, like, or, like, if you're in Utah, let's go get lunch together. Like, let's collaborate. Dano's I'm around. Collaboration, you, you weren't know? around months ago, but you're around today. No, I am around today. There we go. And I'm available. So, yeah, like, if there's something we didn't answer, like, Let's chat about it more. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no, thank you, Dylan. I appreciate it, man. It's another episode of Design Today. 